everybody. So what did I want to tell you? There is a mysterious force all around us all of the time and we can harness it to produce power. You might think one of two things. First thing you might think is I knew it. The power companies have been robbing me my entire life. And the other thing you might think is, well, Rob's finally gone and cracked. But what I'm talking about isn't wind. It's what we discussed in video 1840. It's atmospheric electricity. The Earth is essentially one great big ball of electrons. And above our head, there's a huge cloud of positive ions. And every metre you go up, you get a voltage difference of 100 volts, right the way up to about 52 kilometres, where it's hundreds of thousands of kilovolts. That actually exists, and there's a huge amount of work going on to try to harness that. Now, it's really just an example of electrostatics. And you can think of electrostatics as the magnetism of electricity. It works because like forces, whatever they are, always repel. Unlike forces always attract. It's part of what makes things stick to each other. It's part of why atoms don't fly apart. It's a force all around us, all of the time, that we can harness. And that's what corona motors, atmospheric motors, electrostatic motors, they're all the same thing, doing exactly the same thing. The problem is, when it's a very low voltage, of course, the force isn't very big and you can't do a lot with it. In order to do a lot with it, you need very high voltages and they can be quite scary because a high voltage is like a strong magnet. It's got a big old push. But it is really easy to do something about this. And what I've done is I've designed a machine. Let's have a look at it. And here it is. And you can see it's actually only five parts. One, two, three, four, five. You do need four of those bars, 12 of these rods with threads on the end, and 24 of these little thumb screws, two of these plates, and one of these drums. That drum is the bit that we're going to rotate. Those end plates help hold everything together. These rods here have lots of little holes in them. And what we're going to do is stuff nails through those holes. You can see it's threaded. And then we have our thumb screw right at the end there that we're going to attach on to our threads so that we can hold this thing together and they're just spacer bars. So that whole thing is a really simple machine that we can build. Now obviously I'm going to 3D print this but you could build this by hand if you wanted to. Now, oh incidentally I meant to mention Anything I put onto YouTube is public domain, free for all use, and that's true of any video I've ever done. If you see an idea that you like, knock yourself out, it's yours to work with. Anyway, we're going to print this in real okay, life. Okay, so I've printed 12 of these. These are the little rods with the threaded ends and the holes in them. What you do is take some of this stuff, which is one centimetre copper tape, and that's the beauty of electrostatic machines. They don't use much in the way of metal. In fact, they're ideal for 3D printing because if the bulk of the machine is made from plastic, that's what you want. You're not leaking any high voltage. You use very little metal. This one, we've got a strip of one centimetre wide copper tape that we put on the back there of one of those bars, bringing it up to that point there where the four millimetre hole was. Then what we do is here, stuff a load of these things. These are 30 centimetre, 1.5 millimetre pins. You put those pins into that point there and you will get that. That is a comb of nails that is, surprisingly enough, connected. If I put a metre on here and a metre on here, I get about 0.2 ohms. It's just pushing the nails through the copper creates the connection you want. No soldering required. Then at that 4mm hole that we had here, you just put a bolt. This is an M425mm bolt. Bolt it down and we get a good electrical connection from that bolt to that pin and every pin in that row. So we need to make 12 of those combs. Now the only thing I've done to the drum is stick a bit of 8mm bar through it and cover the outside of the drum with aluminium foil. This is the stuff, it's the stuff that you get for heating, ventilation, uh, ductwork sealing and that's 4 inches or 100 millimetres, exactly how I made the drum. And then it's coated and ready to go. Now the end plates have obviously just got skater bearings in them and the drum feeds into the end plates as do these. These are a bit of M8 threaded bar and the spacers go over those so the bar goes into the end plate 
and the spacer then goes onto the bar so that when we put on the other end plate it's the right distance apart but before we do that we have to put our combs in now the combs alternate so they go one black one red and you'll notice that the M4 are pointing in different directions all the reds that way all the blanks that way so we'll put this thing together okay so that's all the red in incidentally in case you were wondering why the little levers and thumb screws the some thumb screws and the levers mean that we can adjust the position there we go of those nails and the height of those nails to get it I don't know optimized maybe you'll notice that all the nails are pointing in the same direction now it's time to put the black in there it is all together and now we've got to join these up so we need to join all the reds together and all the blacks together and easiest thing to do that is a bit of cable and some crimps and these are four mil crimps because of course we put four mil bolts on there and all we have to do with that is crimp those cables and then we can just connect them up by slipping that on there Okay, that's it complete, and I put a little flag on it there, and we're going to test to see if it works. Now, the way to test this really is to give it a ground and then some static charge. And you see people using Van de Graaffs, you can do it with a bit of plastic that you rub, or you can actually just put a wire up in the air, or you can do what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it a bit of high voltage with this high voltage supply. So we're going to test it with a bit of high voltage first, just to see if this actually does anything. And then obviously what we need to do is get a wire up into the air and see if we can run it from the atmosphere. But let's just try it in a high voltage supply and see what happens. Okay, let's give that a little bit of voltage and see what happens. <laughs> it's working! Okay, I know I'm using a high voltage supply, but I actually got about 2 volts. So the conversion factor, that's about a kilovolt or so, but it's using microamps. Let's put it up a little bit. Yeah, that is some speed, hey? Now you see these things being developed by people doing things like drilling holes in bits of wood, that kind of thing. And there's lots and lots of research. If you go back to video 1840, you'll see some of what I mean. That's about 5 volts, so we're uh, about 2.5 kilovolts, and we're still in the microamp range. Bang it up some more. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Look at that go. Amazing. Look at it. <laughs> Okay, so for a long time, these were seen as little more than uh, toys, really, scientific curiosities. You can find motors all over the internet, very simply made from styrofoam cups and aluminium tape. But they've made great inroads recently. And if you want to look at somebody who's doing an independent development, then have a look at Laser Hacker and his Atmo motor. Very impressive thing indeed. But then industrially, there's things like the C motor, because these are in fact capacitive. There's a, there's a lot of capacitance involved in this. And it's based on the work of Olive, Oleg Jefimenko, if you want to look that up as well. Now, I did these nails for a specific reason. Um, the, some of the stuff I've been looking at have the combs interweaving each other, but you then need a dialectic to stop the arcing. You said, remember, breakdown voltage of air is about 1,000 volt per millimetre, so these are quite well spaced away from the actual drum to prevent that arcing happening. And we're working it by induction. It's an inductive effect where the positive charge forces a negative charge. Anyway, we can go into electrostatics some of the time. The simple thing is that these motors are becoming much more significant in what they can do for some of the reasons we've mentioned. I mean, one thing is it's predominantly plastic, it's hardly any metal. We ran this motor up, which is surprisingly efficient actually, 
uh, and with a 3D printer and a bag of nails. So it doesn't take a lot to do it. No soldering involved, nothing really in terms of the machining involved. So it's very simple to make and that means it's more accessible. Now it's only working from the natural static electricity around us. Yes, I used a high voltage on this to see it was actually working because it's the first one I've made. There are various issues with this. These handles are, are snagging on here. You'll notice I've removed the feet because they also snagged at the feet. So when I was designing this, I didn't really think it through. When I put it into practice, there's a couple of little things I still need to do to it. So I'm going to be working on this some more because it's very impressive. And as I said, it's a power source that's all around us that was previously ignored and thought of as stupid and suddenly has become very, very interesting to lots of people. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.